Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a contact us form using the TronGate framework. Now just to let you know, I'm not going to be processing the form, that's for another video, but I am going to show you how to create an app and just manually create your own contact us form. Let's kick this one off by opening up the TronGate desktop app and we're going to click create new app. Now you can call your app anything you want, I'm going to call mine awesome app. Okay, and we're just going to go through the usual connection shenanigans, then choose a location, I'll put mine inside HT Docs, and we're just going to generate that new app. Okay, so that's going to give us something like this. Now let's open this up in our text editor. So I'm going to say open folder, I'm going to head to HT Docs, here it is here. There we go. And over on the left here, you can see all of the different modules and files and whatnot. Now, this blue screen that we've got is coming from our welcome uh, controller or our welcome module in here. So this is it here and it's just loading up a view file. But we can do a little bit better than that. Instead of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say data view module equals welcome then I'm going to say data view file equals home page content and then I'm going to say let's load up the template and we're going to have a template called public and we're going to pass in the data and save that right now I want you to go to views and you'll see that we've got a welcome.php file here let's rename it to homepage underscore content. We'll take out all of the junk here. We'll take out all of the junk here. So you can see that I've now just got this normal view file. I've got rid of all of the HTML junk. And if we save and refresh, you'll find that you've got something looks a bit like this. Looks a bit more like an ordinary site, you know? By the way, this is going to look fantastic on mobile devices. We have our little slide menu and everything. It's all set up. And what we're going to do is, you see this link up here in the top right that says get in touch? Let's have it so that that link does something meaningful. So I'm going to open up templates, views, public, and I'm going to look for a little link that says get in touch, here it is here and we're going to send it to the base URL and then I'll just call it contact and save that, okay? So if we refresh and if we click here you can see that it's now going to our base URL and then forward slash contact So now I'm going to make a new module So it's inside the modules folder, we have a new folder We're going to call it contact and this is going to have a new folder called controllers and another new folder called views. Inside the controllers folder, we'll have a new file called contact.php. Okay, so we'll do our ordinary opening. We're going into PHP, we're going to say class contact extends trongate. And then we're going to have an index method here. So if we echo hi and refresh, you'll see that we've now got this little hi message on the top left. I don't know if you can see that. So let's now bring this to life. I'm going to just say data. Now actually, let's do this in a really super cool way. Let's say data is this. Get data from post. Now this will make sense in just a few minutes but we're going to say function underscore get data from post. I'm going to say data name equals post name. I'll say true. Then I'm going to say data email equals post email. True. Then data message equals post message comma true 
and then I'm going to return the data. Now later on you'll see why this is important and why it's a cool idea. In the meantime, let's just say data view file equals call it anything you want. I'll go with contact form and then we're going to load up a template. It will be our public template and we'll pass in the data. So into views, new file, it's going to be contact form .php. and we can have a little h1 that says get in touch or contact us anything you want and so now we've got this okay so we've been on the home page we've now clicked get in touch and here we go so now we're going to just build a form so i'm going to go into php i'm going to echo form open and it's going to go to contact forward slash submit we're going to have a form label that says name. Then we're going to have a form input with a name of name and a value of name. So that's going to actually be the posted variable. And then I'll have a little thing called attributes. I'm going to say placeholder equals enter your name here and we'll chuck in those attributes. So there you go. So let's now do that for the email. So form label is email. I'm going to echo form email. So name of email, value of whatever was posted. We'll have some attributes again. But this time those attributes are going to have a placeholder that says enter your email address here. All right, so there's two fields. We'll do one more. So let's have a form label that says message. And we'll do a text area. So form, text area. So we'll call it message. I'll chuck in whatever was posted and we'll have some more attributes. Now with the text area, I'll just say attributes placeholder is enter your message here. Save and refresh and there you go. Now you can add as many things as, as you want onto these attributes. For example, you could say attributes rows equals seven. And you can see that I've now given this text area seven rows. There's other things you can do as well. So for example, if you click here, do you see how we've got these things and it's kind of annoying? Well, you can switch that off if you want by saying attribute um, auto now, how is it we do this? <laughs> uh, autocomplete equals off. There you go. So that's no longer doing that, you know. But maybe you like that feature. It's all up to you. But now we're going to finish this form off by chucking in a submit button. So I'm going to say echo form submit, name of submit and a value of submit. So there it is. I'm going to also add in a link that takes people back to the home page. And this is going to have the word cancel on it. And there it is there. Now this is an ordinary link, you know. If you want, you can turn it into a button by passing in an array here with a class assigned to button. So do you see how cancel has now became a button? And if you want an alternative button, you just add in ALT, save it, refresh, and there you go. Finally, we'll end our form by saying form close. Now you may wonder, why bother saying form close? Can you not just do this? You can if you want, but here's the thing. When you say form close, not only will it do a form close tag, it's also going to add in, and I'll just show you, it's going to add in a CSRF token. So it's basically going to prevent cross-site forgery requests. You don't need to worry about how it works. It's all automatic. So that's our form, right? Now, this form is going to take us to contact us forward slash submit. So we'll have a little method down here that says submit. And... Shall we run through some validation? I think we probably should. So
So I'm just going to say this, I'm going to call upon the validation helper and there's a method inside this called set rules. Now the way it works is we add the name, then we add in the label. Sometimes the label is the same as the name, so the name of the posted variable. And then you just say something like required, followed by maybe minimum length of three, something like that. I'm making this up as I go along. Maybe a maximum length of 65, something like that. Now, if that all seems a bit strange, that syntax, there is an alternative syntax and you'll find it in the docs if you want. But I'm going to just go with this, all right? So, we'll have some validation rules for the name. Let's do the email address. Now, I'll give this a label of email address, okay? And that's just going to be required and valid email. That's all we need. And then we'll do one more for the message. Okay, now the message is just going to have a minimum length. Let's just say it's required minimum length of maybe 15. Okay, so there's some validation rules. Now the way that you make this all work is you say result is this validation helper run and that will always return true or false. Now if the result is true, we're just going to echo well done. And maybe just for the moment we'll say JSON on, well, let's just say data. Is this get data from post? And I'll just say JSON data. It will just shows what we've got, you know. Be a nice way to end this. But if there's a, an error, we're just going to load up index. And on our form, we're going to chuck in the validation errors. Save it. And that's us. So let's just test this out. If we click get in touch, hit submit, you can see we've got a whole bunch of validation errors. Now I'll add a few fields, A, B, C, right? So they're not quite right. We're going to hit submit. Okay, that's looking good. That's our email field. Now I'll just say info at uh, example.com. Okay, so hit submit again. That's excellent. Now you can see that the validation rules are working. We don't have to fill everything out. Now we'll do the form properly. I'll say John Smith. And then I'll say, here we go. This is a message for you. Going to hit submit. And there it is. Pretty cool. Now again, as I suggested at the start, what you do with that is pretty much up to you. But maybe we will cover that in another video if you want. I hope you found this useful. I'll catch you later.